When looking for a square root, uh, usually the directions will say just simplify. This 2 is referred to as the index. This symbol is referred to as the radical sign. And the number underneath the radical sign is called the argument or the radicand. The idea of a square root is you think of what number times itself will give you 49. So you just run through the numbers in your mind. And in this case, 7 times 7 would give you 49. So the square root of 49 is 7. By the way, this index of 2 is not required. If you simply have a radical symbol with no index indicated, then it's understood to mean the square root. So again, the square root of 49 is 7. The square root of 100, if you think of 10 times 10, that would give you 100. So the square root of 100 is simply 10. Notice when I write the 10, there's no more radical sign, or excuse me, radical symbol over it. You write the number without the radical symbol once you've taken the square root. The radical symbol is also considered a grouping symbol. Okay, so this symbol groups together everything that's underneath it. So this says, if you can remember order of operations, you uh, address grouping symbols first. So I can add the 17 and the 8. That would give me 25. But the radical sign has not been used yet, so it comes down. Okay, slide this up. And the square root of 25 is 5. So that's your answer. We'll do a few more. The square root of 64. 8 times 8 is 64. So the square root of 64 is 8. As the numbers get larger, you might have to do a little bit more thinking. Uh, remember, the square root of 100 is 10. So the square root of 144 is going to be more than 10. You might try 11. That gives you 121. That's not what we seek. Try 12 times 12. There. So the square root of 144 is 12. Looking at our next case, remember the radical sign is a grouping symbol. So first we'll handle 95 subtract 14. And usually I'll do my scratch work off to the side rather than underneath. Okay, because I want to put the result underneath. So off to the side. So 95 subtract 14 gives us 81. I put that result here. And then I bring down the radical sign, or excuse me, the radical symbol, because I have not used that yet. All right. Now I take the square root. The square root of 81 is 9 
because 9 times 9 gives us 81. So the square root of 81 is 9. Again, we have a grouping symbol. So first we'll combine those two numbers. Um, this you can probably just do in your head. 100 plus 21 is 121. But again, I have not taken the square root. All I did was combine what's inside. So you bring down the radical sign, and now you have to find the square root of 121. If you've done many of these, you might have some scratch work on the side that reveals the answer. We happen to know it's 11. Okay, now the index is 3. Again, the index is 3, and that says we're looking for the cube root of 8. The cube root of a number is the number times itself three times that gives you eight. So for instance, we'll start with something small, two times two times two. Two times two would be four. Takes care of them, bring that one down. Four times two is eight. Takes care of them. So the cube root of 8 is 2. Another way to express this would be 2 to the third power is equal to 8. So notice taking the roots and raising to powers are opposite operations. The cube root of 64, we'll try 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Bring that down. 3 times 9 is 27. That's not what we seek. We'll try uh, 4 times 4 times 4. So these first two gives us 16. Bring down that 4. 16 times 4 is 64. And that's what we're looking for. So the cube root of 64 is 4. I could have circled my answer up here. Now you can see uh, cubes get large quickly. So I'm not going to get too carried away with this, but we'll look at the cube root of 125. Well, we tried 3, we've tried 4. Uh, let's try 5. Five times itself three times. This would be 25. Takes care of them. Bring this guy down. Sorry, that's a five. And 25 times five is 125. Takes care of them. So the cube root of 125 is five. Keep in mind that the radical sign, excuse me, the radical symbol is a grouping symbol. So first we'll add the 20 and the 7. That will give us 27. But again, I have not taken the cube root of this number. I've only combined what's inside the radical symbol. So I still have to find the cube root of 27. And a little bit earlier in our work, we found that 3 times 3 times 3 gives us 27. 
So the cube root of 27 is 3. I'd like to go over a few more cases that might look strange. The square root of 1, remember there's no index here, so it's understood to be an index of 2, which means the square root. The square root of 1 is simply 1. You do have to be careful when negative signs show up. The negative square root of 9 can be found because the square root of 9 is 3, takes care of that. Now this negative sign just comes straight down. So this is our answer. However, the square root of negative 9 has no solution in the real numbers. And for number, I'll just put that symbol. Because if you think about it, how can you have a number times itself that gives you a negative value. So whenever you, you can't, at least not in the real numbers, we have complex numbers where there is a solution, but you're not called on to deal with that just yet. So you have to realize if there's a negative underneath the radical symbol, there's no solution. Usually this um, answer is sufficient. So again, the negative square root of 1, square root of 1 is 1, and this negative sign just comes down. So this one you can answer. But in this case, there's no solution. All right. Technically, it's no solution in the real numbers, but uh, people are usually happy with just an answer like this. Now, unlike square roots, where you have to be very careful about negative signs, with cube roots, they don't cause a problem. So we've already figured out the cube root of 8 is 2. And in this case, the negative would again just drop down. Over here, if it was a square root, we'd have a problem. But because it's a cube root, we'll, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. These would give you a positive 4. That's gone, that's gone. Bring this guy down. Times negative 2. This gives you a negative 8. So you can see that's what we're looking for. So the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Um, negative cube root of 1. The cube root of 1 is 1, and the negative symbol just comes down. The cube root of negative 1 is simply negative 1.